Hey, DJ. Oh, how are y'all doing tonight? Um, I've been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift lately. Does anyone listen to her much? Okay, here's the thing I've noticed about Taylor Swift. I have this nagging hunch that, like, all of her music should either come right at the end of a romantic comedy or right at the beginning of a slasher film. Like, everything she says, it just has this certain naivete about it where it's just like, I am so happy and blissful and joyous and I have no idea he's holding an axe. It's so like her entire album should just be called Welcome to Crystal Lake. I don't know. People talk about bad music a lot and they obsess over it. It's just like, you don't get it, Chris. This generation's music sucks. And I, don't get me wrong, I, there's a lot of the music in this generation that does suck, but at least this music makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, a, a lot of people are like, okay, Taylor Swift is just like, hey, uh, are you a 15-year-old white girl who likes horses and Lisa Frank? Why don't you take this Taylor Swift album, okay? You can, you can hold hands with a nice young Mormon boy and lose your cuddle virginity watching a Pixar movie. There you go! Or it's like, let's, are, are you a 14-year-old bisexual with colored hair who, who thinks the world's kind of complicated and needs to rage against it? Well, why don't you take this Lady Gaga album and you can shock the world when you bring your girlfriend to the spring formal. But, like, I feel like my generation's music just didn't do that at all. It's just like, hey, I'm a 14-year-old white girl who likes horses. It's like, uh, have you sucked a dick yet? Uh-huh. Here. You're going to take this Britney Spears album, and then you're going to kneel on a skateboard dressed in a schoolgirl uniform, and then you're going to meet the lacrosse team. And while you're kneeling on that skateboard, they're going to pass you around like while you're blowing them, and then every day at school, they're going to call you Dutchie, because all the boys pass you on the left-hand side. <laughs> That's a new one. That's going to be more keeper. Um, I live in Savannah, and it's a very interesting town to live in because they have all these really intricate things. Like, you know, they have all the hippie stuff. You can get organic this and vegan that. But it's all that crazy left-wing stuff. And I didn't know how specific it was until I looked in the paper the other day, and they have Gay Alcoholics Anonymous. Or... Gay AA, or if you read it like I do, gay. And I think it's kind of a fun idea. Like, don't get me wrong, I think their problems are real. If, if you happen to be gay and you're an alcoholic, you know, those are real problems and you need help with them. But at the same time, I'm sure there's some like crazy Rick Santorum voter out there who has alcoholism problems, amongst other things. And, uh, or maybe a Catholic or a Baptist, and uh, he went up to that place and was just like, is this the place for gays who are in recovery? And they went, yeah. It was like, all right. Um, Hi, my name's Steven, and it's been three months since I sucked a cock. Um, it's been a struggle. Uh, I walked by Express for Men the other day, and I held myself back. But those gays in recovery. Was there another follow-up on that? This is all brand new stuff. Um, I don't know. My girlfriend's huge into poetry. I, I kind of support her on that. Like, has anyone ever been to a poetry slam? One of those where they kind of snap and everything, and people are talking, and it's kind of a fun thing. Um, I went to those not one of those not too long ago, and I don't really know how to act because some people snap, but some people clap, and some people yell. So I'm trying to fit in and kind of impress her. It's like, yeah, I know what's going on here. So there's this very proud black poet, and he gets on stage, and he's getting the crowd riled up, and they're like, woo, yeah! And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna get behind this guy. So he just starts talking, and I don't know, I kind of timed it wrong, because what he started saying is, for thousands of years, my people have been treated subhumanly. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get ready to go, woo. And then he, he says, um, Because for centuries, we have been told that black is ugly and white is beautiful. And I'm like, Whoa, da oh, shit! <laughs> that was... My bad! 
Um, sorry about the 1800s. Uh, and Obama's gonna get another four years just because I said that. Whether you like him or not, that's that's just how it works. I don't know. Anyone here work retail? Here's the, okay. Working retail is awful, but at the same time, if any time you ever go to the mall and you have to deal with the employee of the month, it's fucking atrocious. Because you ever been in line and it's just like, we have this many programs and would you like the extended warranty? And, hey, buy this pen! Like, you get assaulted with verbiage the entire time you're there. You're just like, dude, just give me away from me. I want a ruler. Fuck off. Here's the thing. I dealt with that the other day at a Spencer's. Which is just like being assaulted at any other retail store, except it's all the most fucked up shit you've ever seen. It's just like, oh, hey, sir. Oh, um, just wanted to let you know, um, all of our cock rings are 50% off. And, um, oh, uh, you should probably come by for Sit On Her Face Sunday. Anything on it that has a cunnilingus joke is buy one, get one free. And, um, I, oh, have you signed up for our Douchebag Rewards program? Uh, you get 10% back in the mail on any tap-out t-shirt, any shot glasses, uh, anything with a barbed wire logo wrapped around it, you get 10% back, uh, accrued monthly. And I don't know, I mean, hey, that shit adds up, you know. Uh, every now and then we will send you a, a free beer bong. And by the time I'm done, it's just like, listen, um, can't a guy just buy a nine-inch black dildo in peace? <laughs> it's like, I felt my, like my father back in the day. It's just like, listen, back in the day, I could go to a respectable sex keep shop. Whatever. I'm fucking up my words now. That's how you can tell these are all new. Um, anyone here believe in astrology? <laughs> Thank God! Oh God, astrology's retarded. Here, I have, like, all my fucking hippie left-wing friends will get on me about how religion is messed up, and it's just like, ah, I don't believe in you, blah, blah, blah. and then they'll bring astrology in right in the same sentence, I was just like, really? Like, that's, we're gonna go right from, like, walking on water to, like, fucking Reiki? You're gonna run some stones on me and shit? <laughs> like, okay, astrology, if you're not familiar, that's just the, the horoscopes you get in the paper. And, okay, this is how stupid astrology is. You read it, and you always have that arch enemy sign, where it's just like, oh, are you a Virgo? Better watch out for those cancers, they're gonna get you. And it's just, you're just lumping groups of people together. And if you ever read one, this is how stupid it sounds. Just replace the word Scorpio with your least favorite ethnic group. That's all it is. It's just like, let's see, I'm reading the paper today. According to this, because I'm white, this week I need to watch out for Mexicans. Hmm. Those damn Mexicans. <laughs> Let's see, huh? I was born between April 31st and October 2nd. Because I'm black, I need to beware of Koreans. Because I'll get you at the grocery store. I, like, and here's another thing about astrology that I realized. If those things were as true as they say they are, wouldn't the FBI already be on top of it? You know what I mean? Like, couldn't you use that as a defense in court? There's just like, listen, your honor, I, I know this axe murderer, this axe has my fingerprints on it and everything, but you keep talking about how messy it was and got stains everywhere, but listen, I'm a Virgo. We're much more neat than that. <laughs> Clearly, this is the work of an Aries, if you're not mistaken. I mean, come on. At least a Taurus. Did I offend the Taurus in the audience? Oh, I'm a Virgo, actually. That's that's the astrological sign that doesn't believe in any of that shit. Oh man. 
Let's see. Let me go back to something you guys never heard before. Here's a little classic one. Um, I don't know. I try to stay politically active. And one of the last things that kind of caught my attention was um, Chick-fil-A of all places. Um, did anyone know that Chick-fil-A is owned by a larger Baptist corporation? Okay, that's why they're not open on Sundays and things. And don't get me wrong, that's fine, they're good people, but I kind of had to stop going there because I found out they donate large amounts of money to anti-gay hate groups, which I didn't know. And I'm like, well, okay, well, one on one hand, I guess I'm not going to eat there anymore, but on the other hand, I'm like, well, where am I going to get my chicken sandwich, right? So I don't know if you guys knew this, but um, KFC is entirely run by atheists. Did you know that? Entire company. Okay, well, in so much as anyone who has ever seen or held a KFC Double Down accepts that there is no God. Have you ever got your hands on one of those? That's the two fried chicken breasts and then the four strips of bacon. And then I do believe that they squeeze a layer of hepatitis B in the middle. And then they wrap it in tinfoil and throw it at you like you're a fucking dog. And it's just like, hey, fucking eat this. <laughs> and I was trying to think of a way to describe it as a stand-up comedian the other day because it's kind of weird to look at. But I, I kind of, I arrived at this. Um, remember when you were in kindergarten and you would do crayon drawings and then your teacher would put them up on the wall? And my teacher always hung them up so high on the wall that you couldn't see where people had signed their names. But you could still look at the pictures that everyone drew and see who drew them. It's like, oh, that's a picture of a unicorn. Karen loves unicorns. That's Karen's drawing. Or, oh, you know what? Power Ranger. Danny loves Power Rangers. That's Danny's drawing. And then there was always that one kid who you knew would grow up to make pipe bombs in his basement and have his own crystal meth lab. And his drawing was always the most fucked up thing you had ever seen. Like, his drawing was always of, like, a teddy bear that's covered in broken glass. It's just like my daddy, because no matter how much I hug it, it still hurts me. <laughs> that was my reaction with the KFC Double Down. I was just like, oh, Pipe Bomb Billy done made himself a chicken sandwich. That's how that worked. Anyway, my name is Chris Davis, and you guys have a nice night.